couple things. Noveen, I'll get to your question after class if that's okay with you about problem. I will not forget I answer question. Uh, before I do forget, which I did on Monday, bad Dr. White, I forgot to wish you all a happy Valentine's Day. And I should have wore this red top then. So with that in mind, it's time to find out Dr. White will never be a poet. Roses are red, violets are blue. There's no mistake. My students are great. Yay. I'm not going to go any further. <laughs> that was a good one. Thank you. I worked all night on that. And if you believe that, I have a bridge in downtown Chicago. I'll sell you. But anyways, for those of you who celebrate, and hopefully you all do, happy belated late St. Uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, about almost two years ago, I had these three students and they're close friends and they're taking Chem 1105, which is similar to this. And all three of them, they were quite scared of chemistry. I guess they did bad in high school. Well, the semester, that semester started earlier. So by St. Valentine's or Valentine's Day, uh, we had already had test number one. They did really good on it. And they gave me two nice little gifts, a nice little teddy bear that says, greatest teacher. And underneath a cup that said that, I'll have to bring it sometimes downstairs in my living room. Not on St. Valentine's Day, but I also got a plaque from COD for outstanding faculty year. And that's down in my living room too. All right, let's see. I've covered St. Valentine's Day. All right, guess what? Today I'm gonna to be, you're gonna be taking test number one. I will be sending out an email. So I said at one o'clock, but I would say by noon today, give or take five minutes, I will send out a personal email to each of you with the password. The password and it says in the email is all lowercase. And oh, by the way, I created the passwords because when I did that, I just spent a lot of quality time with my driveway again. Boy, the rest of my house, I think is getting jealous with all the quality time I'm spending with my driveway. But anyways, I'll take care of that this weekend. And good news, for next two or three days, it's not going to snow and it won't be super cold. Yay. All right. So I'll be sending out test number one email with the um, password. Now, a number of you asked, sent emails last night or this morning about, well, what should be the file name? And I finally realized when I was doing the labs, by the way, check the grades, uh, your, uh, the grade book in Blackboard. I uploaded the um, lab number two test score, uh, grades, not test score, uh, lab scores. Remember in this class, and I changed it in Blackboard, so it's right all labs are 10 points. And uh, if you have any questions, always feel free to ask either my office hour, which I'll have one tonight, and also in my um, after lab Thursday or Friday, depending on which day you have. All right, now for test number one and all my tests, just, I've, just put your name in the file name, put something like your name, and test one, that will work. If you're off a little, I'm not gonna take all points because I just realized class black, bleh, Blackboard also puts your name and stuff on when I download it. But still, please do that for me because when I open it up, it helps me. Also on the test, if you don't have a printer, you can hand write out your answers. You do not, you do not have to write the questions. That's a lot of waste of time. I have them during the year and also on a piece of paper I have yeah, on my computer. All right, now it says in the email I send you, I reserve the right to subtract up to 25, yes, 25 points if one, you don't submit your file. Test number one answers is a single PDF file. You've all done that. I'd say 99% have done that correctly for your labs, so do that the same way. That is a PDF file. And I reserve up to uh, the right to 
subtract up to 25 points, it's 100 points, so that's a big hit, if you're really late. Now, if something happens, email me, because life happens, and then I'll understand. But most of you should be able to get it between now and tomorrow 10. Uh, I'm giving you plenty of time. Now, in that email, I do say, do not cheat. You should not be looking at your uh, email. You should not be chatting with other students. You shouldn't be going online for help. You shouldn't be looking at your notes. I have ways of knowing if you do any of that. So don't, because if you do, I will do what's in my syllabus, which will get a zero for that test. It won't be the one you can drop. And I will send an email stating why I think and how I prove you cheated and that you did cheat to the Dean of Students and my Dean of Math and Science. Please don't. Other than that, I'm laid back, cheating and lying. That gets Dr. White upset. You don't want me upset ever. I don't want me upset ever. It's not fun. And I like to have fun. All right. I think I covered everything about it. Oh, the PDF file, if you want to keep it on your screen, that's OK, because you're not really going out into the internet. Or if you want to print it out, whichever is easier for you. When you upload the answers, you do not have to have that page, uh, the, uh, the periodic table. And the last page of test number one has important information you don't need to copy or uh, scan that either. It's not any answers. All right, any other questions before I move on about test number one? Yeah, uh, how do you want us to label the file, the PDF file? Uh, is there a format? I, I said that earlier, let me repeat it. Okay. And that is put your name and test number one. That okay. should be, and also, yeah, it might help put your section on okay. the test underneath your name where you sign and print it. And by the way, when you're writing the test, please use pencil. Well, you can do pen, but use pencil. That way, if you make a mistake, you can erase it. I like that, show and tell. And ooh, ooh, I'm in good humor today. Anybody remember the good humor truck with the bells? Never mind. I just did a generation gap on almost all of you. All right. Uh, so uh, that would be just put your name, test number one, and maybe your section. And where I was going on your lab section, you can either put section one for Tuesday, section two for Friday, or you can put uh, Tuesday, what am I saying? Thursday. I'm still used to Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday labs for this class. Section one, Thursday, section two, Friday. Also, you can put down Thursday and Friday. And if you're lazy, you can put TH or F. Any one of those will work for me. And if you want, you can use the German designation too, because Dr. White knows his German. Like Freitag is Friday. See? Ich spreche nur ein bisschen Deutsch, which I translated. I speak a little Deutsch. I'm quite rusty. It's been too many years since I've worked in Germany. All right, any other questions? Oh, wait, let's take a look down here. Really, Kelly, amazing. All right, let's get to work. What I'll be discussing now will be on test two, not test number one. And oh, by the way, a quick reminder, don't forget those who have lab tomorrow, the lab we did last week is due, those who have lab on Friday the lab we did last week is due. Make sure you hand them in because they're an easy 10 points. And if you miss labs, that hurts your grade a lot. And it shouldn't. Ooh, speaking about tomorrow, we're going to have a fun time in lab. Since you're doing the test today, I'm not going to ask you to do a problem set since we also haven't figured finished chapter nine yet either. So we should get out early tomorrow. Don't tell anybody else. All right, let's get to work.
All right, does everybody see chapter 10 on their screen? Thank you. All right, quick review. Remember when we talk about the force that holds atoms together in a molecule, that's in a bond, chemical bond. There are two types you should remember. You should know this. And if you go back to Monday's videotape, you can say I wrote on, see I wrote on here, hint, know this. And still true, but I won't write it now because I already did it. Ionic bond results from the transfer of one or more electrons from one atom or group of atoms to another atom or group of atoms. The other type of chemical bond is a covalent bond. And again, you should know this, the definition. The covalent bond results from the sharing. I always go like this because they are holding hands, sort of. The sharing of one or more pairs of electrons from between atoms. Again, covalent bond, the sharing of one or more pairs of electrons between atoms. Remember, a pair means two. Now, on Monday, I talked about the Lewis structures using valence electrons. Remember, valence electrons are the outermost electrons of a element. And the most stable arrangement is when you have the same number of valence electrons as an inert gas, which is eight. And the maximum number of valence electrons any atom of an element can have is eight. And the Lewis structure consists of the chemical symbol and one dot for each valence electron, which turns out to be the only the S and P outer electrons, never the D or F, and always place, and this is important, always place one electron on one side of an element before putting the second electron doubling up. So, ooh, I forgot to do something. I better do it now. Oh. When you open up the PDF file, if your periodic table looks like this and you want to do it on screen, on a PC, I don't know about a Mac, but on a PC, hold down the control shift and then plus and you rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. Again, control, shift, plus. Rotates the PDF file 90 degrees clockwise. Put a control, shift, negative, or minus, right next to the zero key on your keyboard. Rotates it counterclockwise. And if you look at the Periodic table here, hopefully. Everybody see the periodic table? Thumbs up, people. Hold on. Thank you. And the numbers on top, either Roman, like IV is four. I found out a couple of years ago, a lot of students didn't know Roman numerals. So I wrote the numeric version. Four tells you carbon has four valence electrons, nitrogen five, oxygen six, and by the way, so does sulfur. All the members in the column or family have the same number of valence electrons. Even though hydrogen is not an alkali metal, when it comes to valence electrons, it's got one. And again, it only has one electron. So that's got to be the outermost. And sometime in the future, I give you a piece of paper or a file that you have to print out and says, draw the loose structure for three points each. And I put down oxygen. First of all, you have to know oxygen has a chemical symbol O. 
which we'll use over here. And then you have to know how to use this periodic table to figure out how many valence electrons oxygen has. I'll give you 3.3 seconds to figure that out. Go. One, two, 2.6, 2.75, 2.91. Time's up. And hopefully you all figured out it was six. And how do we do the Lewis structure? Put one on each side, because this has six valence electrons. And then you start doubling up. Now, organic chemists like to double up this way. And if you notice two, two, one, one, that adds up to six. Yay. Now, you could have easily done it this way. And now Dr. White has forced himself to do something unnatural to an organic chemist. Yeah. But it's totally correct. And let's you have a you have a try. Why don't you draw the Lewis structure for nitrogen? And here's a periodic table which will help you. when you're done, give me a thumbs up. And I think everybody's done. So I'll give you another three seconds. Time's up. Nitrogen, chemical symbol N, number on top of the column, five. So it has five valence electrons. Remember the number in the box upper in this periodic table, right-hand corner is the atomic number. That's all the electrons and protons. The number up here are the valence electrons, which are the outermost electrons. Well, now we know nitrogen has five valence electrons. Its chemical symbols N, one, two, three, four, Organic chemists like to put the fifth one here, but you could have put it here, here, or here. I'll do another one. Oh, this is unnatural for an organic chemist, but totally correct. And there are two more I could have written. Again, five valence electrons, you don't double up. If you did this, It's wrong because I have doubled up before I have one side with a valence electron. All sides have to have one before you double up. And that's how you do valence electrons and the Lewis structure. So let's move on. And I started talking about this, the octet rule, which is, and I'll never ask on a test, what is the octet rule? But you should understand it because it applies the things I will ask on a test. And also you should learn more importantly. Oh, by the way, you notice I stress a lot about you should learn this for a test. Secret, if you do good on my test, you'll have learned this stuff, which is really what I want. So I help motivate you by what you want to get what I want, which is you learn chemistry. See how sneaky Dr. White is? I am. So the octet rule is both in ionic and covalent compounds, which means uh, compounds or molecules with ionic and covalent bonds, the atoms tend to acquire the electronic configuration of the nearest noble gas. In a little while, I'll explain how you determine nearest. And noble gas, you should know, is the column all the way on the right of the periodic table. And valence electrons, the most stable one is when you have eight valence electrons, is what the noble gases have. 
And the octet rule really is, and I'll never ask this on a test or the final, in a compound formation, in other words, when you're forming chemical bonds, atoms of elements lose, gain, or share electrons in such a way that their electron configuration, meaning the number of valence electrons, becomes identical to that of the noble gas nearest to them in the periodic table. Oh, look, Dr. White got colorful, and that's eight valence electrons. So how does this apply to elements? And that's if you lose electrons, you form positive ions. And again, ionic bonds are formed by either transfer, which means you either gain or lose one or more electrons from one atom or group of atoms to another atom or group of atoms. And when an element loses one or more electrons, you form what's called an ion with a positive charge. And we also call that a cation, which is how the positive side of a battery is called the cathode from the fact cations are there. Oh, time out for, that's chemistry too. Next time you look at a battery, do I have one? No, I don't have one handy. Uh, Guess what? The plus side, minus side, that's due to cathode, uh, cations and anions. And that's chemistry. Ooh. Now, it's important to be able to figure out the charge of cations form. Now, here I have magnesium, and let's go to the whiteboard and I'll show you why. Let's try this again. That's better. And let's look at the whiteboard. What ion does the following element form? Two to three points each, depending on my mood when I write it on a test. If I put this on a test, hint, hint, hint. But anyways, first of all, you have to know magnesium has this chemical formula. And the question is, what ion does it form? And we show an ion by its chemical symbol and a number and a charge. And the charge can either be negative or positive. Well, how do you do that? Well, you look at magnesium on the periodic table and you say, what is the nearest noble gas numerically based on atomic number? Well, we better get to the periodic table. Oh, here's the periodic table and here's magnesium. Now, what's the nearest noble gases? Well, you've got two choices. Neon, which is only two away, 12, 10, two away. Argon, 18, 12, 18 minus 12 is six away, which is a smaller number. And time's up, hopefully I'll pick two. And now what do we do? Well, you look at neon and it has 10 electrons. Remember, magnesium has 12 electrons and 12 protons. So magnesium has 12 protons and 12 electrons. We got that from the atomic number, 12. Now, you don't have to write this all down, but this goes to what ion? Well, 
it will still have 12 protons. You don't lose protons. They stay in the nucleus. But the electrons, it wants to have the same number of electrons as neon, which was 10. Now, each proton is a plus one charge. You learned that already. And each electron has a minus one charge. Now do the math, plus 12, minus 10, add it up and you get a plus two. And this tells you the charge. Now, how do you show that? Dr. White likes the old way, which is a plus and a number, and this is superscript. Now, you could have written it the newer way the last 10, 15 years, which Dr. White doesn't like, but will be acceptable on a test this way. And this shows you that magnesium forms a plus two cation. When the charge is positive, it's a cation. Ooh, this is fun. Let's do another one. Now, let's do calcium. And calcium, if we look at the periodic table, what's the chemical symbol? Hopefully you learn CA. Now, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to figure out which is the closer noble gas. I'll help you out. You have two choices, argon or krypton. Which is the closer noble gas? Go. Uh, time's up. Which is closer numerically? We're at 20 to go to argon. That's 18. That's two away. To go to krypton, that's much more than two away. That's actually, in this case, 16 away, which is much greater than two. I hope you know those things. Hope you know your numbers, which are greater and smaller. And therefore, the closest noble gas is argon 18. So we have calcium, 20 protons, 20 electrons. It wants to go to a calcium ion that will still have 20 protons. How many electrons? I'll let you think about that for five seconds. And the answer is the same number as argon, which is 18 electrons. You don't lose protons, but you get the different electrons. And now we know each electron, each proton has a positive one charge, and each electron has a minus one charge. I'll do the math. Plus one times 20 is plus 20. Minus one times 18 is minus 18. I'll add this up and I get a plus two. Therefore, calcium also forms a plus two cation. Cation, positive charge. And you could have written it this way, like this. Either way would be correct. And this would be your answer or this would be. So calcium forms a plus two cation. Now, one of the things we'll be getting into more and more now as the semester moves on, how you like that moves on, is the fact that chemistry, you'll see, plays an important role in your daily life. Now, how many of you have heard calcium forms strong bones? And that way you won't get a very sad disease, osteoporosis. Well, are you gonna eat calcium? No, calcium is a metal. Like this railroad spike, it's hard. It's hard, you want to, no, you'll break your teeth. 
well, well, how do you get calcium? How do they, you, I think you've all seen products like Mel that say fortified with calcium, that I put calcium metal in there. No, you break your teeth or kids will break their teeth, which is not a good thing. It's fortified with calcium cations. And that's what helps makes your bones strong. Say minor strong, ouch, no. But anyways, that makes your bones strong. And the way it forms is a polyatomic ion called usually calcium citrate. Ooh, let's go out into the real world, but first I see, yep. Uh, someone just asked, will you ever have a negative cation? The answer is no. And that's because positive ions are always called cations and negative ions are always called anions. Just like my top, will I ever call this yellow? No. Well, unless I lost my brains, which I hope that never happens. But I'm being facetious now, very. It's always going to be red. And cations always have a positive charge and anions have a negative charge. I like the special graphic effects I'm using today. Uh-oh, it's being silly Wednesday. And everybody, do you see on your screen, calcium citrate? Thank you. And this is over here, what it looks like. This is organic chemistry. This is a polyatomic ion. And here notice calcium, they do it the newer way, is a plus two cation. And this is a chemical most widely used to put calcium into things and also Dr. White should be honest now. I take a calcium supplement because I'm getting a little older, if you have noticed. Uh, but anyways, and I want to keep my uh, bones nice and strong. Same thing here. I don't want to get osteoporosis. And I'm not a big milk drinker. Haven't been all my life, even though I do like cheese and dairy, to make sure I take my morning calcium citrate supplement to get calcium ion cations plus two to make me nice and strong. Now, let me show you a secret. Once you see, if you look at here, magnesium and calcium are both plus two. Once you learn what cation or anion one of the members of a column or family use, the others are all the same. Strontium, which I didn't ask you to learn, but is also forms plus two. Number three, number one, only plus two. Oh, let's do another one. Sodium. I'm going to let you try what anion, excuse me, back up. What ion does sodium form? And sodium, in case you haven't learned, hopefully you have, Na, first of all, which is the closest noble gas, how many electrons and protons does sodium have, and how many electrons does the nearest noble gas have? And that will show you how to figure out what ion sodium has.
And when you're done, give me a thumbs up. Or you can try the other emojis too. I see people still ciphering out there. I just pulled a generation gap that came from Beverly Hillbillies TV show when I was in high school or yeah, high school. That was one of the most popular shows on TV. Have you noticed the stuff on TV is not as good as it used to be? Ah. Back when I was in high school and then there was only four stations, ABC, NBC, CBS and WGN, five making channel 11. Uh, public, I could tell you every night of the week what were the good shows on. I was so brainwashed. All right, let's do it. All right, the question is, what ion does sodium form? It's at 11. What's the nearest noble gas? Either neon at 10, argon at 18. Neon is one away, argon 18 minus 11 is seven away, which is a small other number. Hopefully I'll pick one. And therefore the closest noble gas to night on uh, sodium, which is 11 protons and electrons is neon, which is 10. So what do we do? Well, Dr. White likes to let, you could do this in your head, but I like to let the paper do my thinking. And here we have sodium at 11 electrons, 11 protons, doesn't matter what you put on top or bottom. And it wants to go to the sodium with the same number of electrons, nearest noble gas, neon, which is 10 electrons, but it will still have 11 protons. Each electron minus one charge, each proton plus one charge, and do the math, minus 1 times 10 is minus 10, plus 1 times 11 is plus 11, add it up, and you get a plus 1. Now, when the charge is either plus or minus 1, you don't put the number, and all you do is put the sign. So the answer for the problem would have been this. It's a cation. I didn't ask that in the question, but I'll tell you anyways, so sodium forms a plus one cation. Now, if I asked you lithium, I tell you it's in the same family, the alkali metals, then you can immediately know that lithium forms a plus one cation too. And so does potassium. Because any once you know one element in a family, you know them all. All right, now, remember, I think Kelly, what you're, uh, where you turned down the wrong path is, we end up with the same number of electrons as the nearest noble gas, and that's 10. You keep the protons, then you do the math. Does that help? Um, I think I'm confused. Uh, in my head, I'm doing 10 minus 1 equals 9 and 11 plus 1 equals 12. No, this is a so multiplication I... right here. Once... Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> I got oh. it now. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll make dollars too. <laughs> I should have written something like this. Uh, let's Does that help? Yes. <laughs> well, that's a good question because now you know what this means. When is there when there are two numbers and I multiply, and if I put a bracket there, that means multiplication. That's the shorthand. Organic chemists are lazy, and if we can take the short way, we do. All right. Now think about that. 
sodium forms a plus one cation, always, never exception. If you find an exception, let me know. We'll be rich beyond my wildest dreams. Trust me, with money, my dreams can go pretty wild. But now for another Dr. White story. Why do you learn worry about sodium cations? Well, a number of years ago, I joined this new group and uh, practice, medical practice, and I'm so glad I did. That's NCH, Northwest Community Hospital practice. And they're in the Northwest suburbs and they have great doctors uh, and also physical therapists. I'll tell that story another day about PT. But anyways, uh, when I went there, I had this great doctor, unfortunately had to retire after a couple of years because he was having severe back problems, really bad, that he just couldn't work anymore. Uh, and I hope he got it cleared up, but I don't think so, unfortunately. But, and the person I now go to, she's just as great. But anyways, I went to him. And for some reason, when you're an organic chemist and you tell them that, they figure we can level with you and be really, maybe that's just normal way. I don't think so, but I appreciate that. And he said, after I went in for my annual physical checkup and they do a blood test. Notice I pulled my blood there. And they actually, yeah, that's how they do it. And uh, Dr. White goes like this when they do that because I don't want to see them sticking me with a needle, but that's a personal thing. All right. And after about a week or so, he calls me up and says, you got to come in. I got to talk to you. Oh, okay. So I go in, have an appointment. And he says, let me show your blood work up. And here's your sodium. And here's the other things. And he said, and I'm in his uh, examining room where they have a monitor and it's hooked up to the internet. And he already knew a certain couple of articles to pull up and says, see, you're in the 95 percentile. That's not good. Because that means if you don't change and lower your sodium level, and if you're taking organic chemistry to triglycerides, I'd be teaching a level, you'll be dead in five years. I got my attention real good. And he said, yeah, look at this. You're in that 95 percentile. You've got to do that. Now, what does he mean by sodium level? Well, I'm not eating sodium metal because if you put sodium metal in water, it explodes. So don't ever do that. Well, he's talking about sodium cations. And I'll teach you either today or next week uh, about sodium cations come from table salt. Please pass the knuckle. And if you look at labels, it's a lot of stuff, not just putting salt on your food. And I had to cut back on certain things. Uh, one of the things that really was bad was Dr. White loves, and I don't eat them that much anymore, the ramen noodle package, soup packages. I lived on those in graduate school. My favorite is the Ichabon shrimp. Oh, I love that. But anyways, uh, I actually put in some more shrimp to my own. They don't have any shrimp there. They have the shrimp powder. If you look at the sodium content, and they're not talking about sodium at all, trust me. Ooh, that reminds me. I'm going to have a special surprise for you tomorrow or Friday in lab. I mean, a real special, and deals with sodium. You'll see. You'll love it. I hope you do. But anyways, uh, hold on one second. No, that's not what I want. So everybody see on their screen the product specification for soup? Ah, well, that's why I asked. Now do you see it? And for this soup, if you look at it, sodium, 1,820 milligrams. That's 1.82 grams of salt. That's more than your daily amount. I don't think it's that high. I would... Uh, well, that's what they say. Let's try another one just to be. Oh, 
That is a little lower, but still 1.17 grams of salt in two bowls. They call it one, uh, two servings per package, right? I wipe out a whole package myself. I've never done half of one. So there's a lot of sodium in there and that's things I cut back. And good news, I'm still alive. Yay. And that's because I cut down my sodium level and we're talking about sodium cations. So you can tell your friends, neighbors and loved ones, do social distancing, don't forget to wear a mask, unless they live in your house. And that is be careful of your sodium cations because they can cause high blood pressure. So now you know how to determine the charge on certain elements that form cations. Now other elements, instead of forming a plus charge, which means they lose electrons, they gain. This thing shows you it lost two electrons. I uh, just thought I'd show you that. And those are the two valence electrons. Remember, we're only looking at the outermost electrons because those are the most important in an element in Dr. White's opinion. Now, we also have negative ions and negative ions are produced when an element gains one or more electrons. Why? Because it wants to have the same number of electrons as the nearest noble gas, eight octet rule. And here, an ion with a negative charge is formed, and we call that an anion. And if you look at your battery, or if you look online, you'll see the negative part of a battery, which I think is the bottom part is negative, but don't quote me on that, is called an anode from the fact that there are anions there. Ooh, batteries, chemistry, big time. You know something, I'm looking at the clock, instead of rushing and going over, let's take a minute longer break. Don't tell anybody I'm being nice. And I'll see you at 10.55. Dr. White's gonna get up and do his stretching. And I do my lower leg ones and that keeps my legs from cramping up. I'll see you in five or so.
Ring, ring. Time to start again, everybody. I'm going to have to find an audio tape of a bell online somewhere. Get you all back to classroom. Ring, ring. Time to start. All right, let's get going. Quick commercial from Dr. White. Actually, not a commercial. Public service announcement from Dr. White. And that is within about 30 minutes or less after the end of class today, I can get up and stretch again. And it'll take me a little while to get the emails out. I will be sending each of you to your student email account an email with the password for test number one. And depending on which version you have, you'll download it. It's in the assignment area Blackboard. And then you'll have until tomorrow morning to take the test and then upload it to the assignment area as a single PDF file. Remember, Dr. White reserves the right to take 25, yeah, that's a lot of them, points off if you don't do that correctly or if you get it in late. Please don't. Now, if something happens, you're going to be late, email me. If it's a valid reason, then I'll make an exception. But if you don't, I will take off up to, I reserve the right, up to 25 points. And that will not be good for your grade. I'm giving you plenty of time the rest of the day tomorrow. Also, starting uh, at about 4 p.m. today, because I teach this afternoon till 4, I will, about every two hours, I'll check my email. If you have a question, you can ask it. Now, I'm not going to give you the answer to the problem, but maybe you're confused by a question that happens, and I'll try and clarify. Also, tonight, I will have my office hour. So if you still also have problems with a question, stop by and ask. It's permitted. One other thing, uh, based on some of the problems some of you had with labs, before you upload your PDF file with your test answers, open it up and make sure you have all the pages in there. Uh, it's happened last semester, and I usually get back to students and say, you forgot page eight which was 10 points, that's not good, to upload it. So before you upload, it's all always good quality control. And Dr. White actually managed for three years a quality control lab, also a research lab at a major chemical company at a major chemical plant that shipped about 100 million pounds a year. And I was in charge of quality control along with research at that plant and that company. And um, check your PDF file, make sure you can read it, because if you can't, I can't, and make sure you've got all your problems answered are in the PDF file. Okay, let's move on. We're talking about negative ions, which are anions. And if we look at one, let's look at chlorine. What and what ion does chlorine form? Let's find out how to do that. Oh, I just thought of something. Don't do it publicly, but I'm assuming, and I've learned life, you really shouldn't assume, which is why I'm saying this. Can everybody here read cursive? Because I know they're not teaching it in school now, I think. Sad, but not true, I guess. But if you have any troubles, email me and all that, and I'll start printing. But 
And I also always decode it in case you just can't read my handwriting. Even though my first grade teacher would be happy. Oh, look, he's writing nicely. All right. Question would be two or three points. What ion does the following form? And I could have asked, what ion does the following element form? And let's do a chlorine. And you have to know chlorine has chemical symbol Cl. Now, same rule as for, I showed you for cations applies for elements that form anions. They want to, in this case, ha still have, as in the previous case, the same number of electrons as the nearest noble gas. So let's look at our periodic table. Here's chlorine, an, a halogen. It's at 17. What are the nearest noble gases? Argon, 18, only one away. And neon is seven away. And Krypton is a whole lot away. So what's the smallest number? The uh, noble gas, I was going to say, uh, or I did it wrong, inert gas. And that should be argon. So it goes from 17 protons and electrons to 18 electrons. So if we look at chlorine and this has 17 electrons and 17 protons. It wants to go to the same number of electrons that neon has 18, but it will have the same number of protons. Now, what I'm doing right here, you do not have to write on the test, but I'm showing you the thought process. If you want to do that, go right ahead. And each electron and I'm multiplying it times minus one, each proton multiplying has a plus one charge. Electrons negative one, protons minus. I'll do the math. This is minus 18. This is plus 17. I'll add it up and I get a minus one. Whenever it's one, you don't show the number just to charge. And therefore, this forms a negative one or minus anion. So the answer would be on the test this. And therefore, chlorine forms a negative one anion. Now, let me have you try one. Why don't you try bromine? What ion does bromine form? Your turn. Oh, I see smoke coming out of everybody's ears. Your brains are working. <laughs> and when you're done, give me a thumbs up or you can smile if your camera's on. And those of you who are quicker than others, I ask you to be patient. So I try and give everybody time to finish. And if we were in a classroom setting, I'd say the same thing and do the same thing. I don't know if you saw it the other day in the New York Times and I found out about it from David Korn's Twitter account who works for Mother Jones. There was a great article in the New York Times how this one professor from I think University of Southern Cal who's English professor said how he likes teaching on Zoom. And a lot of teachers have complained how bad Zoom is. I disagree. I like teaching on Zoom. I also like being face to face. But the advantage of being on Zoom is I don't drive 10 to 12 hours a week.
Plus, in bad weather, like if it was yesterday and we actually had classes, which we didn't, but if we did, I wouldn't have to have driven and you wouldn't have to drive to COD. And in our lab, we'll be doing more breakout rooms so you'll have time to meet people, which is a good thing. All right, let's get going. Question is, what ion or anion, what ion does bromine form? Bromine, 35, the nearest noble gases. We have krypton one away, xenon a lot farther away, and this is a lot farther away, 17 away. So what's the closest noble gas to bromine? That's krypton. Now, bromine is at 35 electrons and protons. How do you know that? The atomic number. Remember, certain times I ask you for valence, other times you need atomic number. And krypton has 36 electrons. So what does that mean? Bromine is here, it wants to lose, or no, gain one electron. They have the same number of electrons as krypton, but it doesn't change to protons. Each electron is a minus one, and I'm multiplying. Each proton is a plus one. Do the math, this is a minus 36. This is a plus 35, 35, add them together. You have a minus one. Therefore, when this is minus one, this forms a negative one anion. Remember, negative ions are called anions. And positive charged ions are called cations. And therefore, the answer on the test would be this. Now, once again, time for a secret from Dr. White. Have you noticed we just did two halogens, this column? And chlorine was a minus, forms of minus one anion, and bromine does too. And like I showed you with the cations, if you know one of the ions in a column of a family, you know them all. Therefore, if I asked you what ion does fluorine form, immediately you can say eh, minus one. Iodine, same thing, minus one. So once you know what ion one member in a family forms, you know them all. Oh, let's do one more. These are fun. Now, you know, Dr. White's a chemist. What ion does oxygen form. Your turn. Let me quick check and you should all be seeing the periodic table. And as I look around the classroom, I don't see anybody with serious pain on their face. So, see, chemistry isn't that bad. Yay. Speaking about yay moment, Does everybody notice no more clicking? I solved the problem. That's because I went to a powered USB port. All right, let's do it. I'll give you another 8.6 seconds. All right, let's do this. And the question was, what ion does oxygen form? Now, oxygen 
has atomic number of eight, eight electrons, eight protons. And what's the nearest noble gas? Neon is two away, helium is six away, and argon is 10 away. What's the closest? Neon. And neon has 10 electrons. How do we know that? The atomic number tells you number of electrons and protons. So if we go to our whiteboard, and again, I like to do this on paper, you don't, but let the paper do your thinking. I was always worked for Dr. White on test. We have oxygen. Oxygen has eight electrons, eight protons. It wants to go to an oxygen ion that has now 10 electrons and, oops, almost blew it. Don't look. Eight protons, you never change the number of protons. This I've never done in a chemical reaction that we do. And therefore you do the math, each electron is a minus one charge. Each proton is a plus one charge, minus 10, plus eight. Add them up, you get it minus two. Therefore, you can either write it this way or the newer way, which Dr. White doesn't like to do, this way. And either way, oxygen, when it forms an ion, forms always a minus two anion. All right, let's move on. Now, we talked about forming molecules. And one way of forming it is by forming ionic bonds. And ionic compounds, which have surprise ionic bonds in them, are formed by electron transfer. Atoms can donate electrons and other atoms accept those electrons. And when such a transfer happens, you get positive when you donate electrons, lose them, and negative ions anions when you gain electrons and you form positive and negative ions and they attract one another forming a ionic compound. How many have heard where you see a couple and they you look at them and say, how can they be together? And someone else says, oh, opposites attract. And it's true in life. And it's true also with ions, plus ion, negative, it's called a cluomic attraction. Oops, they come together. Speaking about which, you'll never see this. My best friend in Indiana has been married to his wife since, when was it? Uh, 1977. They've been a long, a long time. I actually met Neil in 65. Well, but anyways, they are the complete opposites. And I'm always amazed that they've been together decades and still are happily married at times not, but they, ever, who doesn't fight? But anyways, but they have been happily married and they're so opposite, but they attracted and they've stayed together. What a beautiful sight. But anyways, opposites attract. Well, how does that play a role in our life? And we're talking about atoms, not people. Well, let's look at one of Dr. White's favorite things to talk about, and that's sodium chloride. And remember, please pass the knuckle. And we call that either salt or table salt. Now you buy it at any supermarket. Dr. White buys the kosher salt. Now I'll explain why later, either today or on Monday, and why you should too, even if you don't keep kosher. All right, now. Again, ionic compounds are formed from positive and negative ions are held together by strong electrical attraction, opposite attract, and we call this an ionic bond. Now, how do, what are some important things 
in forming an ionic bond. Why is sodium chloride NaCl? Why not Na5Cl? Why not be able to write it better? Na5, or why not Na2Cl3? This is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. It's only this, why? Well, first of all, when we look at a, a formula of an ionic compound and sodium chloride is an ionic compound, the formula NaCl indicates the number and you can figure out now the kind of ions that make up the ionic compound. Now, something that's very important So important, I'm going to write this. The sum of all ionic charges in a formula, which means that any molecule is always zero. All molecules have a net zero charge. That means when you add up the charges of anions and cations, it's always zero. And by the way, covalent molecules also have a net zero charge. I know of no exception. If you find an exception to this rule, let me know. We'll be rich beyond my wildest dreams, which means it does not happen. All molecules have a net zero charge. And I'm not saying, okay, that's supposed to be a zero. Nope, I don't have any paper. But anyways, that's, I can do that. And again, the formula of any ionic compound has an over, a zero overall charge, or as I like to say, a net zero charge. And the subscripts of the formula are used to obtain this overall zero charge. So let's take a look at this. What does it mean? Well, we just figured out what ion does sodium form? Oops, wrong color. Sodium you found out forms a plus one charge. Chlorine, what ion does that form? It forms a minus one. If you notice, this is a plus one. This is a minus one. And what does it add up to? Zero. And therefore, when you take one sodium cation and put it with one sodium chloride anion, you get please pass the knackle, sodium chloride. And this is why there's only one sodium and one chlorine in sodium chloride, because you need to have a net zero charge. And by knowing this, you can figure out for ionic compounds, what is the proper chemical formula? Let's look at another one. Uh, Sodium iodide is NaI. And why is that? Because sodium is a plus one charge and iodine, as we figured out, if you know one noble gas, uh, noble gas, one halogen, you know them all, is a minus one charge. 
therefore, this is a plus one, this is a minus one, and that adds up to zero, which it should. Therefore, that's why the formula of sodium iodine is NaI, because this is one sodium cation, one sodium, uh, one iodide anion, and it forms a net zero charge. Now, I mentioned earlier about salt, and Dr. White teaches you a lot about your daily life. It's time for one of those lessons. Now, I always, when I cook, by the way, I didn't mention, this is something I found very true in life, and that is, if you're a good organic chemist, you're going to be a good cook, and I'm a good organic chemist. I'm also a good cook. I was very lucky uh, for my generation. I don't know about later generations, but when I grew up, most guys didn't cook, especially their fathers. No way. Mothers did that. Well, it turned out my father loved to cook. I never asked him why, how he started doing that. That's sad. I wish I knew, but by the time I was seven or eight, on Sundays when he'd have off, because he had a drugstore for about 10 years and he worked Monday through Saturday. So Sunday was his day off when he didn't open his store. And once in a while, he'd go around. I, have a, I had a mother and I have two sisters. And he'd say, this Sunday, it's men only cooking in the kitchen. My mother was a very good cook. Father was better. And I'd cook with my father. I learned cooking was fun. And it is. It's like chemistry. Well, anyways, why do you not, why should, when you're cooking, you should only use kosher salt? And the answer is, if you look at the other salt you can buy, and how many of you are familiar with the round Morton uh, salt you buy, and it says iodized, iodized. And what does that mean, iodized? Ooh, well, let's take a look and see if I can find a, it out in the internet. All right. Does everybody see the salt on their screen? Thank you. Now, if we look over here, it says iodized salt. I didn't realize that they sell penning salt, but I'd rather buy the kosher salt. By the way, kosher means it's made to a higher purity standard. It follows the Jewish kosher laws, which I won't get into now. Go to Google and and if we look at this, if I can spell it right, and here they have kosher salt, and it's not iodized. Now, what's the difference? Now, iodized salt doesn't have iodine in it. It has sodium chloride and sodium iodide. Now, kosher salt is this sodium chloride. My tongue can taste that. If you taste the iodized salt, then you do a taste test with kosher salt, they taste different. Why? Because this is put in there. Why is that put in there? For health reasons for children. Years ago, they found out iodized salt helped prevent certain diseases, like I think, and don't quote me on this, uh, goiter and other things that help. Well, I don't know how true this still is, but if you're cooking and you've got older kids or just adults, go with the kosher salt. It is better. Oh, by the way, time for, oh, I got time. How do you know something is kosher? And if you see on your screen, do you see a bunch of symbols? 
the circle U here. And that circle U or these other symbols like the circle K or this is Hebrew, it tells you those items are kosher and a certain organization certifies it. The most common in the United States is Circle U, which stands for Union of Orthodox Rabbis, who have a branch that go to companies and uh, certify their products are kosher. I'm not going to go into why or how. That's another day or come to my office hour. But let me just show you a quick thing. I don't know if you can see it. On my water bottle here, there's a circle U. And that means the water inside and the bottle and everything meets the kosher standards. Go look at things you buy next time you're in your supermarket. Most of your cookies are, your potato chips are, and other things. Now, anything made with pork in it can't be kosher. So if you eat pork and beans and you get it in a can, which Dr. White doesn't because I don't like beans, those type of beans. I like navy beans and others, but not baked beans. Yeah, my sisters love it. Yeah. But anyways, they won't be kosher. All right, let's continue on. Now, what does this mean? All molecules have a net zero charge. Let me say that again. All molecules have a net zero charge, which means it's zero. So if I were to ask you on the test, remember this is test two material, I keep most of my problems, even though later on we'll have some 10 and even 15 point problems, but not yet. Yep, 15 points, one of them later in the semester. I think I'm spelling empirical wrong, but I was always first one down in spelling bee. Now, we learned earlier that calcium, hold on. Forms a plus two cation. And you saw I proved that chlorine forms a minus one chloride. So how do we do? Watch the screen and find out. Now, this is a plus two, and this is a minus one it should add up to zero. It doesn't, what do we do? Now, listen carefully. Students like to change the charge. You can't. Chlorine, chlorine is always gonna form a minus one. Calcium is a plus two, but you can change how many of them. How do I get this to add up to zero? I need two of these. Should've gave myself more room, I will. And now this adds up to zero. I can put a line through it and do the fancy technical way of doing zero. So how do you write the formula? What does this tell you? There's one calcium, because there's only one in front of that, but two chlorine. And we write it one calcium and two chlorine. And this is calcium chloride. As I said, we're getting more into the real world. If you go to your favorite big box home improvement store, and locally, we'll hopefully we won't need it now that it's getting going to be warmer soon. The little white pellets they sell for melting ice on your, on your sidewalk and driveway 
is calcium chloride. And this works better. They also sell sodium chloride, rock salt, but this works better at lower temperatures. And those little pellets are this, this material pressed into little round pellets. They'll let you spread it easier. And I'll teach you later in the semester why this works at lower temperatures, but calcium chloride, one calcium cation, two chloride anions. When it's an anion and it's a halogen, we call it chloride. And I'm not really going into nomenclature and I won't ask the names on the test. Ooh, this is fun. Let's do another one. Oh, I'm going to have you try one. What would be the empirical formula? Empirical formula means the simplest formula with made from a molecule with ions magnesium plus two and fluorine minus one. Your turn to have some fun. Isn't it nice I share with you people? I don't know if they still use this terminology. I might be doing a generation gap, but Dr. White doesn't hog all the fun. They still use that terminology? You younger students, like everybody out there? <laughs> I, I shouldn't have said that. Dr. White's still very young at heart and always will be, hopefully, God willing. I hope he is. Or for those of you who are not sexist, I hope she is. I guess in that point, I am sexist. Probably the only way, place I am. <laughs> you better believe it. Growing up with two sisters. All right, let me check. Everybody done? It looks like everybody's done. Let's do this. How do you determine what's the formula of a molecule with magnesium plus two cations and minus one fluoride anions? Well, this always has to equal zero. All molecules have a net zero charge. Well, I can't change the charge, but I can change how many. And to get this to add to two, I will do that. And now we have what? In order for it to be zero, I have one magnesium and two fluorine anions, and magnesium fluoride would be that, MgF2. Remember, the number is always subscript, not up on top. All right, let's continue on. Let's do another one. Now, I talked about polyatomic ions. And polyatomic ions are molecules that exist in a unit, but they share the charge. And let's look at this one. Here we have magnesium plus two, and hydroxide is a minus one. And this is a polyatomic ion. How do you do that? Same thing. All molecules have a net zero charge. This is a plus two. This whole polyatomic ion, in this case anion, is a minus one. All molecules add up to a net zero charge. And therefore, how do we get it to zero? You can't change the charge, this, but you can change how many. And I'll get to who's ever question in a second. So if I have two of these, two times one, minus one is a minus one plus plus two will get me to zero. How do I show that? Well, there's one magnesium because the coefficient number in front is one, but how do I show two of these? When you have more than one polyatomic ion, use a bracket. And since I have two of those, and you don't have to show charges, I put a two to the right of the last parentheses, my right parentheses, 
This shows me I have one magnesium and two hydroxide. And that's how you do polyatomic ions. Ah, the question is, uh, one of your colleagues asked, how do you uh, do things like carbon and other things? We'll get to that. It's called covalent bonds. Not all elements form uh, ionic bonds. Carbon is an example. Nitrogen can do both. Uh, some of the metals are usually, which I won't get into in this class, I try and keep it easy for you. Don't tell anybody I said that. Uh, and that's how. And helium and neon, those, even though they're called noble gases, essentially, I don't know of any molecules I've ever worked with or you will that have noble gases in it. Let's find out real quick, because I might be lying to you. As you can see, I'm having trouble finding it. I know somewhat, here's one. This, these are very rare. This is xenon uh, tetrafluoride, which I've never encountered. I guess you can do krypton, uh, or this would be hexafluoride, krypton, tetrafluoride. I have no idea even what you'd use this stuff for. So. It's very rare, and hopefully that answers whoever answered that question. All right, so when you have a polyatomic ion, you have more than one, you put it in brackets. If you don't have more than one, you don't put it in brackets. And let's try the following. I'll let you try it. What would be the empirical formula of a molecule that has calcium plus two cations, and this is called bicarbonate anions? Your turn. Uh oh, I'm out of tea. Ah I still have my water bottle. Boy, this chemistry is thirsty work. So I don't get messed up. Dr. White stays away from the strong stuff like Dr. Pepper and Werner's. If you don't know what Werner's is, go to Jewel and try some. It is good. So is Dr. Pepper. I'm not a Coke person or Pepsi. I used to be a seven up, but nah, now I'm replaced that with Werner's, but I'm still a Dr. Pepper. Actually, I'm a Dr. White. <laughs> oh, is that bad? <laughs> I cracked myself up. All right, at least I know one person likes my humor. All right, I think everybody's done. Let's do this. What ion, I see a question first. Ah, somebody got to first. What ion, what's the empirical formula for the molecule made up of calcium plus two bicarbonate minus one? All molecules have a net zero charge. The charge on calcium plus two charge on the bicarbonate HC3O3 CO3 minus minus one. To make this add up to zero, because all molecules have a net zero charge, I need to do that. I need one calcium and two bicarbonate. How do I show that? One calcium, since I have two of the polyatomic anions, 
I put it in a bracket. And then subscript, I have two. And that's how you do it. Now, when you don't have two, you don't need the brackets and obviously you don't need that. Oh, let's try another one. And this minus applies to the whole polyatomic ion, not just the oxygen. So what would be the formula of a molecule with sodium plus and bicarbonate minus ions? This one's a real hard one. <laughs> Hopefully it's not. And when you're done, those of you without your webcam on, give me an emoji, thumbs up. Thank you. All right, looks like everybody's done. Let's do it. And if you notice, sodium plus one cation, bicarbonate minus one cation, all molecules have a net zero charge, which means the total number of cations and anions have to add up to zero. Oh, it does. So this molecule with sodium cations, cation is a plus charge, and bicarbonate anions, Anion's negative charge has one sodium and one bicarbonate. And that's how you write it. By the way, you've got this in your kitchen, most of you. Baking powder is this, mainly. There's a little small amount of anti-caking, but if you have the small stuff, the small cans, either red, which most of you have Calmet, or if you have another color like a house brand, like the, uh, oh, what's some big box stores? I don't know if Jewel has one, but, um, or Walmart, or is there another one I'm thinking of? I can't think of the name of another big box store, but it's, they're all about the same size, small can, and that's baking powder and that's sodium bicarbonate. All right, Kelly asks a very good question. All questions are good questions. Why do we not add the brackets? And because there's only one of these, you don't use brackets. When there's more than one, in order to show a subscript, then you need the brackets, because this is wrong. And I'll show you why you need the brackets here and not here. Because if I just wrote this, oh my goodness, this molecule has 32 oxygens. No, it only has two of these, which is three times two, six oxygen. And that's when you need to bracket. Let's do another one. Ooh, this one's tricky. Did I do my alphabet right? I did. Look out, I'm on a winning track. What would be the simplest formula or the empirical formula for a molecule with sodium cations? This is called sulfate anions. Remember, all molecules have a net zero charge. Hurry up, give you 18.5 seconds more. I'm watching my clock now, go. Oh, 
I'll give you 20 seconds. I'm being generous today. Time's up. Eh. How do we do this? We look at the charges. For the empirical formula for any molecule, all charges have to add up to zero. You have a net zero charge for all molecules. This is a plus one. This is a minus two. Does that add up to zero? No. But you can't change this, but you can change how many. And I need two of these. Two times this is a plus two plus a minus two, and now it will add up to zero. How do I show that? Well, this tells me I have two sodium. When you have this an element, that would be two sodium. I have one sulfate anion, and I write this. And let me write it a little better. And this is sodium sulfate, and that's the material in those packages they say do not eat. If I look at the clock, oh no, I've gone almost a minute over. In about 10 to 20 minutes, you should all get maybe 30 minutes, but I would hope within 20 minutes, you should all get an email with the password you should use for what version of test number one I've asked you to take. You have until tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. or give or take a few minutes to upload as a single PDF file with your answers. If you don't have a printer, just write them on a piece of paper and then scan them. If you don't have a scanner, use your cell phone like all of you have been doing for your labs and upload it. Tomorrow, Thursday, we'll have lab for Thursday people. Friday people will have lab. Now, I guarantee by Sunday, 1 p.m., even if I have to stay up all night Saturday, I will have the a the your test scores for test one in Blackboard. I'll send out an email when they're available. Also, by Monday morning at the latest, hopefully by Sunday afternoon, each of you will get an individual email, which will show each answer you put down, not the answer, but how many points you've gone for that. Next Monday, I will go through the answers for the whole test. I will take that out of the video, cut it out. If you can't make it next Monday, come to my office hours and I'll always go through and help you then. And with that, I get to say, gang gazoon, Thursday people I'll see you tomorrow, Friday people I'll see you on Friday. And everybody stay safe, good luck on the test, hopefully you won't need luck. And remember, follow us in the email, don't cheat. Please, I have secret things that I'll catch you. I will, and I have online. Dr. White Sneaky with that. Gang Gazun, goodbye. Uh,